Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and in today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to take a look at a technique used to posterize images. And by posterize, I mean limit the number of colors in an image. Now, the nice thing about this technique is that it gives you a lot more control over maybe just using the posterize adjustment layer by itself. And the way that it does that is we're actually going to use a combination of, of multiple layers. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll begin on our Layers panel. You can see this is just a single layer image. And if I come over here right now to my Adjustment panel and simply click Posterize, the problem is, is that when I enter in the number of levels, let's say for example I only want four colors in this image, well, Photoshop by default uses this number of levels per channel. So I'm really getting four colors in red, green, and blue, and then when they overlap, I get a lot more colors, as you can see in the image, than simply four. So I'm going to undo that, just Command or Control Z, and instead the first thing I'll do is I'll convert this image to grayscale. Now, whether or not you want to use the channel mixer adjustment layer or the black and white adjustment layer is really up to you. I'm going to go ahead and use channel mixer for this first example, and then in the second example I'll actually show you an action that uses uh, the black and white adjustment layer, but that's up to you. What you don't want to do is just simply convert it to grayscale because that's going to take away all the flexibility. Because remember, because this is an adjustment layer, I can come back later on and decide how I want this image converted into grayscale. So for now, all I need to do is click on the monochrome button. And it appears as if it's grayscale, but all of that color information obviously is still there in the background layer. Okay, now that it's simply levels of gray, when I return back to the adjustment panel and I add my posterize adjustment, I only get those four levels. So perfect, exactly what I want, except that they're in black and white, and I wanted to have them in color. So we return one more time to our Adjustment panel, and I think the easiest way to add back in color is by using the Gradient Map Adjustment layer. So let's click on that, and by default I'm getting just a black and white gradient, my foreground to background colors, but if we click in this gradient here, then my Gradient Editor appears where I can go ahead and choose from one of the defaults here, or we can make our own gradient. And since I broke this image up into four distinct tones, I probably want to add four different colors. So that means I want to change the number of stops down here. Now to change the color, we simply double click on the stop and it brings up the color picker. I'm actually going to start down here in the blacks, and it, it doesn't matter if you start on the left or right hand side, I'll go ahead and start on the right here, and then go ahead and use the little elevator to, to, to change the color, which isn't going to have any effect right now, obviously because it's black, but it will matter when we pick subsequent colors. So why am I starting with black? Because I want the darkest color in my image to be black, and then I'm going to add an additional stop here, maybe around 33%. And you can see right down here under Location, we could just type in 33%, and then double click on that stop in order to bring up the color picker. Again, I want to go to those blue tones, so let's go ahead and bring up a color like this, and we can move this color picker out of the way there so we can see what's going on. So I'll pick kind of a, a very palish blue color and click OK. We can move the yellow stop over, double clicking on it, and maybe bring up another color. Now, if you're just randomly picking colors, this is fine. If I wanted to, I should just show you, you can drag a stop off of the gradient here, and then if I wanted to pick my secondary color kind of based on this color, I can hold down the Option or the Alt key and just drag on that color stop. That way when I double click on it to bring up the color picker, it's going to select that previous color and then I could make my change this way. So let's bring that over to gray, click OK, and then for my final color stop here, let's go ahead and double click on that and make it white. All right, now you'll notice that there's not a lot of white here, but that is actually dependent on what the colors were in the original image. And remember, I told you we could go back and change that, but before we do, I just want to point out that if I don't like the colors here, 
Obviously, it's really easy to change not only the colors, but you can see when I move the color stops that I can also change the brightness values here because I'm going from darker to light, so it's changing not only the brightness, technically it's changing the saturation as well. But as I scoot this over, we can see that now I've got a much lighter kind of bluish green shade there in my somewhat darker areas of the image, right? So I've only got four colors, so it's the black, it's the pretty dark, the medium light, and then the white way up here. But I don't really like how it's breaking because I need a little bit more white. So let's go ahead and click OK. And then we'll come down here to my channel mixer adjustment layer. And because I added channel mixer, you can see that I can go in here and change the amount of the red, green, and blue mixture. So let's just bring that up maybe to like, I don't know, 60 or so. And I might want to add a little bit of green as well. It just all depends on how you want the tones of your image to break. So the nice thing about this technique is that not only can I change the tones, but I can go back and change the colors as well. Obviously, I could change the number of colors by just changing the posterize options. So it's a very, very flexible way to take your image to grayscale. In fact, let's go back into the gradient map for one moment. And I'm going to actually select a preset that I just created that I, I like that one a little bit better. I just like the tones in it. Um, how I did that was simply once you've set up all of your stops in the gradient editor, you just click New. You can name it if you want. Click New, and then it will just appear right up here in your presets. OK. So one other thing that you might want to think about is if there's certain areas that you don't really like. Like let's say, for example, you might want to just darken down this side so there aren't these white spots here. Don't forget that you can always add additional layers, right? So I can add a layer and paint on it. And I'm not ruining the original, but if I paint with a dark color, it'll go ahead and bring those white tones darker and make them a different, a different tone here. In, case, in this case, it would be kind of this lighter brown color. So all I'd have to do is click to add a new layer, grab my paintbrush by tapping the B key. I probably don't want it set up to 100%. So if you tap like the 3 key, you'll get 30%. If you tap 4, you'll get 40%. And then simply click. Now, we better look at what we're going to brush with. We're going to paint right now with white, which would make everything lighter, if you see. That is not what I want. So let's undo that. And we'll tap the X key, and that exchanges our foreground and background color. And let's just make sure that we've got a soft edge brush that we're painting with. And now when I click and paint, you can see how all I did was I added, in fact, let's Option click here on my layer. You can see that I've just added a little bit of dark area. Now that might be too hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly go to my preferences to transparency and gamut. We'll just turn that off. Now it's a little bit easier to see that I've just shaded down this area. Well, that plus this is actually enough darkness or it adds enough darkness to actually take those brighter colors into the next posterized level down. So again, I could paint again. If I wanted to add more, we could paint across the bottom, paint across the top if you want to, just to kind of add a border into your image. And of course, if you paint enough, or if we tap the zero key and paint with 100%, well, that's painting with 100% black. So we could actually go in there and create kind of a very unique border all the way around our image as well. OK. So if this is something that you like to do and you do it a lot, let's just scoot over to this next image because I want to show you that that just anything that I do more than like, you know, two times a week or something, I would create an action for. Because I don't want to sit there and manually have to add each one of those adjustment layers. So you'll notice right down here in my actions, I've got a posterize action. In fact, I have two of them. One of them adds the sequence of adjustments in black and white using the black and white adjustment layer, and the other one uses the channel mixer adjustment layer. So instead of having to go and add all those adjustment layers manually, all I need to do is tap the play button, and it added them all for me. So obviously it's too dark, but we can go into the gradient map. In fact, it's already targeted, so using the adjustment panel, we could go and maybe select maybe a different color range or color tones in order to apply them. And we could go back to the black and white adjustment layer. And maybe we could try to get some definition. If, if you look at the thumbnail here, the boot in its original form, actually, um, there's a lot of reds and yellows, but they're all very similar in color. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to separate those colors. 
as I convert this to grayscale. So what I would do is I'd actually take the reds and try to pull them up. So let's turn on the black and white adjustment layer. See, I'm taking the reds and pulling them in one direction, making them lighter. And I'm going to take the yellows and I'm going to try to pull them in the other direction, make them a little bit darker. So what that's done is it's just kind of changed the conversion to grayscale so that when I posterize this and add my gradient, um, it's going to break it in different areas. And I think that might have gone a little bit too much. So maybe we bring the reds down a little bit. Uh, let's go ahead and leave it. So this brings up another point, which would be a cool technique. And that is you could also go in and add like a curves adjustment layer if you didn't like the way that the image was breaking into color. So we could just go to the background layer, add my curve here, and we could bring the blacks down a little bit. See, now you can really fiddle with exactly how your image is breaking. I just want a little bit more in the blacks. And we'll bring that up a little bit more in the light areas for added contrast. So I mean, obviously, how you decide to break your image is up to you, what colors you use. But this is really the most flexible way to do it. And of course, if we wanted to, we could even, like if this background is getting distracting, we could add another layer and just paint lighter or darker to force it into the color range. Or we could go back here just to our background layer and grab something like the Quick Select tool. And we could just kind of drag this around here and around there. And maybe we need a little bit more selected right in here. That might have been a little bit too much. Let's zoom in. Yeah, it's selected a little bit uh, too much. Well, no, it did a good job at the heel there. So let's just pull this in as well. OK, great. Zoom back out. And now what we could do is let's turn on all of the other layers there. All right, and if we don't want to see this background, we could uh, paint on it or we could create a new layer right here. And then we could, let's drag that down underneath the curve there. Now, because we've got this selection, obviously when I paint with a brush, and I'm painting too much, because remember I set that opacity back up to 100%, but if I set it to maybe 20% and paint, we can just paint that in. And in fact, if we wanted to, we could even go in and make these a little bit different down here. See how it's pulling the shadow as well. And just add just a wee bit of kind of a separation there. And if I just tap the X key again, we can just get rid of that little area right there. Oh, tap X key again and just paint in right there. And maybe right there, oh, too much. X key again and do that. And then we'll deselect it. So don't forget that you still have access with all of your other tools, right, to make your selections and selectively paint in different areas to really customize your conversion from a full range of colors down to maybe three or four colors. Well, excellent. So I hope that you see how that approach not only allows for that maximum flexibility, but also kind of grants you the power to quickly go in and customize um, the colors that you're using in the image. My name is Julianne Koss. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of The Complete Picture.